top resolution usually taken whenever a year is passed and the people enter into new year? Any guesses? Weight loss, yes. The gym membership goes up and then people start going to the gym and then you know we have people making resolution. That's number one. But today, I'm going to, I'm not going to be talking about weight loss because that's up to you. I leave it to you to make decisions on that. But as a church, as the people of God, we've got to make some decisions moving forward, some very concrete decisions. Because the day and the age that we are in is not the same as it was before. But when we look at this particular scripture, you are going to notice how when Paul wrote this, he was in fact in a similar situation. So I'm going to direct your attention this, uh, at this time to the book or to the letter that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 17 is my text. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 17. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making most of every opportunity, making most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. If at all it's possible, I do not want to force anybody, but I would ask us as a church to memorize these three verses. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. To set it in context, Ephesians is a fantastic letter that Paul wrote, but you know where he wrote it from? He wrote it from a prison. And that's where he got tremendous revelations about the doctrine of salvation, how we are seated in high places, and he comes right down to chapter 5, and this is the injunction he gives to every Christian believer. Be imitators of, not the preacher that you're watching today, or not the preacher that you watch on television, or not your father, not your mother. Be imitators of God. Follow the example of God. That's the injunction he gives right at the outset as he comes down. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Ephesians chapter 1 and in 2, we find a great verse. It is by grace you have been saved, not by works lest any man should boast. All of that. And it, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 talks about the fact that we are created in his image. If we are Christ's masterpiece, created to do good works that God has appointed for us to do. And then he comes in chapter 5, and that's what I read for you. Be imitators of God and live a life of love as Christ loved and gave himself up for us. And straight away he goes down and he gives several instructions. Avoid sexual immorality. Do avoid every impure thing. As God's holy people, these are improper. Avoid foolish talk. No immoral, impure, or greedy person. Such a man is an idolater. Has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And after saying all of this, he now says in chapter 5 verse 15, be very careful then. Be very, very careful, precisely, accurately, how you live your life. He's asking us to imitate God, and then here he's saying, you are supposed to live very carefully. How many of us are careful in the way that we live our lives? Precisely, accurately. That's the meaning that that's been translated as very careful. And then he says, not as unwise people. Meaning, do not be foolish. Senseless. 
without thinking what you're doing. Because your life on this earth matters. The way you live. If you have been saved and brought into the kingdom of God, once you've entered into God's kingdom, you are living to a different standard. So he said, be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Making the most of every opportunity. The meaning is redeeming the time. In one translation it's written as redeeming the time, meaning buy back the time. The time. Time is one thing that is given to everybody on this planet Earth. No favorites played. Everybody. Everybody is given time. Nobody is given 25 hours. How many times you have said, how many times I have said, I have no time. I don't have time. I cannot do this because I have no time. Time does not play favorites. God works within time. That's a very significant thing that he has established. So he has given each of us time to live on this earth. You don't know. You did not determine the day you were born. And you will not determine the day you will go. Neither will I. Neither will I. Because there are so many people who saw 2016. Who thought that they would make it to 2017. But they're not here. In fact, I had to do a funeral a couple of days ago. And the children of the um, father who passed away, the children said, we thought that he would, we'd have a few more days with him. We did not think that he would just go like that. We thought we still had a few more days. But he went. So be very careful then how you live, redeeming the time. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So I'm going to just break this text down and try to tell you just two things today. Redeem the time, number one, redeem the time and understand what the Lord's will is. That's what is written in these two verses. Redeem the time because the days are evil. Imagine Paul writing in the first century, 60 and 62, the days are evil. Were the days evil then? How are the days now? Why, why does he say the days are evil? It's because of two things again. One, because of the fallen nature of mankind. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. And then Jesus said in John 14, For the prince of this world is coming, and he has no hold over me. And in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 it says, The ruler of the kingdom of the air is at work in those who are disobedient. In 1 Corinthians, uh, in 1 John chapter 5 verse 19 it says, We know that we are children of God, and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. So who is controlling the world system? The system of thought, the way that we are supposed to live. The world system, if you are living, if you and I are living according to that, it's controlled by the evil one, the devil. So if we want to live according to God's standard, there's only one place I can point you to, and that is the word of God. There's only one place that you can understand what God's will is. What are the standards of God's uh, way of life? So, number one, redeem the time. How can you redeem the time? How can you redeem the time? First, do not dwell on the past. Whatever happened in 2016, just let it go. You can't get those days back. Some of those days may have been good. You want those days to happen again? Unfortunately, you can't. Those good days that you had in 2016. You wish you wanted back? Sorry, you can't. But those days that you felt that this is not worth living, it's so painful, it's so hurtful. Remember, God says this. He says, the one who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, 
Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. No matter what you have gone through, remember, he is a creator. He keeps creating new things. There's some new things that are going to happen for us in 2017. He's creating a new thing. Do not dwell on the past. He's making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Paul goes on to write in Philippians, he's writing about how he wants to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. And after he writes that, he says, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but this one thing I do, what is that one thing he does? One thing he does, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. He's saying I'm doing only one thing. I forget what is behind and I'm straining toward what is ahead by pressing on to take hold of that which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus to win the prize. So first I said, how can you redeem the time? Number one, do not dwell on the past. Number two, Press on with your eyes on the future. Press on with your eyes on the future. Because there is a future for you and me. If it is not on this planet Earth, there is a future that is waiting for you and me. You and I are going to live forever. One place or another. You and I are going to be living forever. There is an indestructible part of us that God has created. It's C.S. Lewis who said this. When you speak to people, there, there are no ordinary people. You do not speak to mere mortals. You've never spoken to a mere mortal. Because we have been created for eternity. So do not dwell on the past. Number two, press on with eyes on the future. This is how you redeem the time. The second thing is, understand the Lord's will. Because as you read in that text, it said, do not be foolish. Don't be senseless without thinking about what you're doing, how you live your life. You've got to think. You have to think about how you, are, how you have prioritized your life. What are you doing every day? Because it matters for eternity. So he's saying, do not be foolish, senseless, but understand what the Lord's will is. So now talking about God's will. How many of us immediately think, oh, I don't know what God's will is for my life. I don't know what God's will is. I need to seek God's will. I need to find out. I've got news for you today. You know what the news is? For all of us as believers... As people, if we, have bo if we have been born again and brought into the kingdom of God, you know what? It's interesting that 90 to 95 percent, God's will is the same for all of us. There's only a difference of like 5 to 8 percent. Like for example, coming to church, it's not an option. It's God's will. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says, do not forget the assembling of the believers every week. So you cannot say, oh, pastor, let me pray and see whether I must come to church today. <laughs> or whether I must come to church on Sunday. That's God's will for all of us. Another example. It said, do not become weary in doing good. For if you have done good, if you do not grow weary, you will reap the harvest at the right time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 58, it said, your labor in the Lord is never in vain. So that means... If you tell me, Pastor, if I, if Pastor Greg or myself or some of the ministry leaders come and ask you, would you please come and join me? Oh, no, Pastor, I don't have time. Or let me pray about it and come back to you. You don't have to pray. It is God's will for you to be involved in ministry with the church. But what is what you've got to pray about according to your gifting or according to what God has uh, blessed you with? But being involved in church, it's God's will for all of us. How many of us are still obedient? 
For example, take Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is again God's will for us. If you look at that text, Matthew chapter 6, verses, it says, what shall, Do not worry about what shall we eat or drink, for the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. This is God's will for you and me. How many of us are seeking first God's kingdom? And it says, very, very well, it says here, it will be added to you. Therefore, because you're seeking God's kingdom, do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry about what 2017 is going to bring. You keep seeking God's kingdom. What the promise is? Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow, for 2017, will worry about itself. See how God says that, how the word of God is inspired? How many of us take that worry upon ourselves? He's saying that day, the tomorrow, 2016, already that will take care of, that will worry about itself. You don't worry, because I'm with you. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Another example of what God's will is. It says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures on earth, on, in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If your treasure is in the bank, your heart will be in the bank account. But if your treasure is in your soul that is going to live forever and ever, your heart will be working towards eternity. You'll be using those resources in order to store up for eternity. So God's will is pretty much 90-95. It's the same for all of us. You're called to be in a community living for him together. But there's only a little bit of difference where you've got to find out what's God's specific will for you in what you're doing. Maybe you're not working in a computer firm. Continue to work there. If he's calling you into ministry, then you've got to consider that. If he's calling you to go and uh, do a, uh, move to another location and do something, those are things that are specific to you. But generally, God's will is the same. So, as I said, redeem the time by not dwelling on the past, pressing on with your eyes on the future, understand what God's will is for your life. And I showed you God's will, 90% is the same for all of us. And in application, as we want to bring it down, as I said, as a church, as a family of God's most beloved children, there are a couple of things that I would want to encourage each and every one of us to do as part of our New Year resolution as we enter into 2017. From 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 15 through 18, it says this, Rejoice always, pray continually, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So I want us, no matter what happens, rejoice in the Lord. Pray continually. Pray continually, without ceasing, without giving a break. That is what it means, pray without ceasing. How many of us say, I have no time to pray? And this is where I'm going to make the application. The church is going to be praying from January 3rd to January 6th, Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 to 8.30. It's going to shake up your schedule. I know we all plan in advance. Some of you already have things planned out for those evenings. But would you be able to shake up the schedules and say, because it is God's will for us to pray continually, I am going to be in church, try my best to be in church for one hour on from Tuesday to Friday to join in the time of prayer. Would you take it as a challenge? 
If at all you have a valid reason, you are not able to make it. Would you be on your knees at home from 7.30 to 8.30 and pray? Setting aside every other work? Pray continually because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Understand what the Lord's will is. It is to pray continually. Would you take that as a challenge? And when you begin there, would you in 2017, every day, not leave your house without bending your knees before God? Without bending your knees before God, would you please take minutes to pray and seek him. And the second thing that I wanted to say, as the community of believers for us to do, is what God told his servant, Joshua, at the, at the time of transition. We are at a time of transition. We are going to be moving in a few minutes from 2016 into 2017. And Joshua here was taking on the reins from Moses. Moses is dead. And Joshua is actually the Hebrew name for Jesus. And here, let's see what God tells Joshua as he is nervous. He doesn't know what's going to happen because he's got to lead these people. You know Moses could not take them into the promised land. Now Joshua is assigned Joshua is supposed to lead them. He's afraid. He doesn't know what to do. And you know what God tells him? And if you are in that situation wondering, how is 2017 going to pan out for me? Pan out for me? What are the things that are going to happen? I don't know. This is what God would tell you. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law, the Torah, on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You will be prosperous and successful when, when you meditate on the word of God, the Torah, day and night. It says it is from the morning to night. It's for a considerable, considerable amount of time, a season of time. It's not saying, like, sit down from the morning till the night. No, you have to take a season of time to sit down and meditate on God's word, reading God's word. You may ask me, Pastor, can you tell me, is there any place where the, there's a command in the scripture that's telling me, I got to read the Bible every day. Read the Bible. You know what? There's no command. So many of you are very happy, right? There's no command to tell you to read the Bible every day. But can I tell you what it says? It's assuming that you read the Bible. The Bible is given to you and the assumption is made. Where do I find that? When Paul is writing to his spiritual child, Timothy, he said, you know what? And from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And then it says, all scripture is God-breathed. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You want to know the plan of salvation? You want to know where you came from? You want to know how you are supposed to live? You want to know how this world is going to end? You want to know what waits for you after you pass from this earth? It's all in here. It's all in here. And when you meditate on this day and night, when you treasure this, it's going to make you prosperous and successful. And this is a challenge I gave the young people. Two weeks ago, we spoke about this. We said, hereafter, from 2017, I would want to see us young people, I included myself there too, as a young person, said, we are going to carry the Bible to church. I know we all say, oh, this, is, this one is there. I have this on my phone. I read it. No, this is only a secondary source. 
This is the primary source. You and I, I wish you could take the challenge as an adult. Start carrying the Bible to church. Start carrying the Bible to church. If you really love the word of God, you're reading this every day, start carrying this to church. This is the most treasured possession that you can ever have. Because even Paul, when he was in the prison, when he, was, he, when he wanted to ask for something, there are only two things that he asked. One is because he was cold, he wanted a cloak. And the second thing he asked, bring me the parchment that I left behind. I need my Bible. He needed only that in the prison. How much he treasured God's word. And that's why he has given us so much that even for a lifetime, if we continue to read and meditate, we will not comprehend everything that is written there. Would you take the challenge today? As you enter into 2017, would you redeem the time and understand what God's will is? I'm going to invite Pastor Greg to come forward and continue in prayer with us so that when we enter into 2017, you will take this challenge seriously because this matters for eternity. I invite Pastor Greg to come forward and to lead us into 2017. Thank you, Pastor Solomon. How many of us tonight can say the Lord has been faithful and that you love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength? It's good to know that our God is a faithful God and that he always remains faithful even to the very end. You know, this evening as I reflect in these final moments of 2016, some of us are not going to be sorry when it goes. <laughs> Maybe 2016 wasn't the best year for you, but we know that God is already there in 2017. So we have nothing to fear and nothing to worry about because God is already there. And as one person says, this is oftentimes a great opportunity for us all to have a fresh start and a new beginning as we look ahead to 2017. Only God knows the possibilities of what's in front of us and only God knows what opportunities he will present to us. But we need to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord always because we know that we also are fighting against an adversary. But tonight, when we think about this, what the new year brings will often depend a great deal on what we ourselves bring to the new year. So it's a great opportunity for some of us here tonight to lay some things aside and to not carry them forward into 2017. You know, perhaps it's a situation, maybe it's a memory, maybe it's attitudes or habits that we have. Whatever those things are that are our hang-ups, we can cast them at the feet of Jesus. As a matter of fact, in John 7:37, in these final moments, as we think about this, it was on the last day of the great feast that Jesus stood. And it was during the time of his popularity that people were beginning to question and asking, who is this man? They saw the miracles. They saw the ability of what Jesus did. He was unlike any other before him. But in that day, in John 7, 37, on the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood in the temple and he said with a loud voice, if any man thirsts, let him come. You know, I often think about this and I reflect upon it, that there are things in life that we enjoy. There are things in life that we gravitate towards. But Jesus is the only thing that really brings satisfaction. Many of us can stand here and testify, you've tried so many things, but there's only one, one, one person that can truly satisfy the deepest longing of our hearts, and that's the Lord. Whoever believes in me, it goes on to say, as the scripture said, shall be streams of living water that will flow within him. You know, I'm astonished 
in the long suffering of the Lord that he bears with me year after year. And he bears with you year after year. But you know what? He remains faithful because of God's incredible love for each of us. Think about this invitation as 2016 comes to conclusion and as we think about the year ahead of us. There's an invitation that Christ has for all of us and that is that if any one of us is thirsting spiritually, only he can fill that desire and that longing in our souls. And I pray that, you know, as we take inventory tonight, that there's a promise that he said in Matthew 6, or, or Matthew 5 rather, that he said, anyone that, that thirst, let him come and let him drink. You know, they that hunger and thirst, the Bible says, they shall be filled. I can't help but think of that old hymn that we would sing, Come Thy Fount of Every Blessing. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Lord, take my heart, take and seal it for thy courts above. How many times have we wandered along our path in 2016, but yet the Lord remains faithful. He comes and he stands beside us. So the invitation tonight is that, Lord, let us be thirsting and hungry for your true presence. Because really, that's really all that really matters in 2017. Whether we ever have good health or whether or not we get more wealth or whether or not we experience the goals that we want, it's really for the presence of Jesus. And I want you to just take this moment to bow with me as we take inventory tonight. Father God, we look within and Father God, we, we come humbly before the throne of your grace. And Lord, we know that as your sons and daughters, we have a privilege. We have a privilege that we can stand and we can call. And God, you've already called and you have spoken to us to come. There's an invitation to draw into ever closer relationship with Jesus Christ than we've experienced thus far. There are experiences that we will have and there are things that will happen in this year that will make us thirsty. But only you, Jesus, can satisfy the longing of our soul. Father, I pray that as we begin this journey, a new beginning, a new start in 2017, I pray that, God, that old things are going to pass away because, God, you're the God of a creation that is better and that is, that is more powerful than anything we've yet experienced. God, I thank you that, Lord Jesus, we have a brand new start and a new beginning with you. We invite you, Holy Spirit, tonight to take residence in our lives. Lord, that we would truly have a desire to live our lives, Lord, not as the foolish as we just heard, but as wise, redeeming the times, O oh God. I pray that, Lord, that we would be vigilant and, and on our guard, Lord. We pray that you would put a hedge of protection around our families and our loved ones, O oh God. We pray that, God, that your blessings would continue upon this great land called America. That, Lord Jesus, that your work for her and your work with her is not yet done. But, God, we come humbly before you, God, and we ask that in spite of her many faults, Lord, that you would raise up a generation and that you would raise up your church in this hour to stand for Jesus Christ boldly and in spite of all of the persecutions, in spite of all the things that may come against us, that, Lord, we will stand firm in our faith, that we will remain unwavering, O God, and who we are as your sons and as your daughters, that, God, that your righteousness would be exalted even in our hearts. Lord, give us pure hearts. Give us clean hands, Lord Jesus. Give us the desire, Lord, to serve you with everything. God, may every opportunity that, Lord, that you present to us in 2017, let it not be to our credit, but let it be to the credit and the glory of Jesus Christ. Let this community know that there's a church and, and a ministry here that cares about their souls as much as we care for one another. Let this community, God, know here in Metuchen, as there are new souls that are going to be coming in, Lord, as this community expands and grows, that there is a, a church of the living God 
that is concerned about them as well. Lord, we ask that you would raise up the generation of this day, God, that would follow hard after you with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. God, we thank you for this blessing of this new year. Father, we give you thanks in it, and we rejoice in your goodness and your mercy. For we ask this in Christ's precious and his holy name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Happy New Year. Praise the Lord.